Hi, this is Larry London. Welcome to Border Crossings. Today, we get uh, the lucky opportunity to speak with one of the founding members of one of Canada's most successful rock bands, one of the world's most successful rock bands, but they're certainly listed in the top 75 most successful bands from Canada. Finger 11 is the name of the band, and Scott Anderson is our guest. Welcome, Scott. Thanks for having me. It's great to have you now. First of all, I know that the big news that we're talking about now is the Greatest Hits album. That's that's the big celebration, the big news with Finger Eleven. But I want to spend more time, a little bit of time right now, talking about the history of the band. You guys started off in the mid-90s. I guess you met in high school together? Yeah. Yeah, I met James uh, actually even before high school uh, when I was maybe 13. Um, and we would just, he played guitar and I played the drums and we would get together every weekend. Then in high school, I met Rick and Sean was my brother. So I've known him for a while, but he <laughs> decided to, uh, you know, he would watch us jam every weekend and go like, oh, okay. Uh, I want to get in on this. I want to play some bass. So yeah, it's been, it, we've, we've been doing this for a while. Yes. Yes, you have, but it wasn't always finger 11. How did we get from Rainbow Butt Monkeys to Finger Eleven? <laughs> well, you know, uh, like I said, even before high school, we got together, and uh, we, um, one of James's good friends, uh, we were looking for a band name, and one of James's friends couldn't remember the name of uh, Mandrills, and so it, he was in class, and he was wondering, he's like, "What are those Rainbow Butt Monkey things called?" And after school, James phoned me. He's like, "Dude, I have the name for our band." <laughs> And we thought it was very funny. <laughs> and uh, we went up, we just, uh, we kept making music and we entered a radio contest and we won it and all of a sudden got a Canadian record deal and we were the Rainbow Butt Monkey. So uh, <laughs> that's how things started. Um, and we, you know, it was, we did many tours in, and then at a certain point we said, okay, we need to, we need to change. We need, we're, we're doing different stuff now musically. So we need to acknowledge that. Mm -hmm. And you, how did you come to the name Finger Eleven? I know that 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 may represent a guitar, you know, the, the thing, but I, I don't know. How did you come up with that name? There was a song when we were kind of when we were exploring new music in the studio. I had this lyric about Finger Eleven pointing the other way. What I was trying to get at was like, you know, despite what everybody else may think, like you have to sort of go your own direction, you know, follow your own star, whatever you got to do. Um, and that seemed really, um, really apt, I guess, for that point, because the, the record label didn't understand why we wanted to change it all. I mean, it was, a, we were, we were successful. And then we said, well, no, the music is different and this is important. We need to, we're a different thing now. So we said, okay, well, you know what? We're finger 11. We're going to do our own thing. And that's, mm -hmm. that's the origin of the name. Right. And the band uh, has won uh, Juno Awards, nominated for Juno Awards, won Juno Awards uh, in Canada and, and been on tour around the world, sold out shows at just about every venue in every country. Uh, you guys have had quite an illustrious career. And so now we're at the um, how many years anniversary is it of the band? It's 20th or 20 or 25? Uh, I I think it's 25. <laughs> 25th 20. anniversary and the Paralyzer, one of the big hits. Everybody knows that that was a number one song. You had, you had quite a few number one songs. Just looking down the playlist here of, from the greatest hits album, living on a dream in a dream, one thing falling on. And of course, Paralyzer, everybody. Knows. And then there's a whole bunch of other songs, which were big hits for you guys. Was there any surprise in your career? I mean, was when you released a song that became a hit, was it something that you thought all along was going to be a hit? Well, it's funny because when we went to, um, it, we wrote one thing uh, at a cottage. James and I wrote one thing. We finished off a few ideas in that cottage session. There's a song called Stay in Shadow. And uh, we finished both one thing and Stay in Shadow in that session. And we were really excited to come back from that session and show the guys what we had done. And we're like, oh, Stay in Shadow. Guys, this is going to, this is it. We're going to, you know, this will be, this will be a huge song. We played them both. We played Stan Shadow. We played one thing, and the band was like, "Ooh, ooh, that one. That's that's a that's a nice song." You know, we're like, "Oh yeah, yeah, no, for sure." We we uh, we we put that together uh, one morning. <laughs> you know, but we were really really excited about Stan Shadow, and all the focus was on this song, one thing. 
and it's a much simpler, but more mellow ballad. And that became the, uh, you know, that's uh, the one thing got all the attention and Stay in Shadow just, it's still a neat song, but it did not get anywhere near the attention that this song one thing got. So that's, it's always a surprise. You never know how people are going to react, but it's, um, it's, it's wonderful when they do. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and I'm sure you guys have had a chance to perform your music, as I mentioned, to many different countries. What's it like when you're on stage and you're in a country that doesn't speak English, but they know the words to your songs? They can all sing along and sing out loud. <laughs> that's good. I mean, that's the fun part. And uh, I've tried to, you know, say thank you in like French and really, really bad Italian, you know, <laughs> and it's. But at least I, I felt like, look, I know I'm going to not be very good, but at least I should try. I should try. Maybe they'll mm. appreciate that, you know. Mm. So, uh, but it is neat when somebody, you know, when the when the when the music sort of crosses those barriers. Mm. And you get to touch people in so many different places and in so many different ways, because a lot of the songs people relate to the lyrics, they relate to the story of the song, and I think that's key is making music that's relevant and relatable. And and you guys have managed to do that for a long, long time now. What are three must perform songs for Finger Eleven at any concert? You mu- the must haves. <laughs> well, you got to you got to have Paralyzer. Mm-hmm. You got to have one thing. And, you know, for the for the band, we like to play Quicksand a lot. That's the first song off the first Finger Eleven record. Mm-hmm. Um, I would I would go with those three. Those 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 got to be in there. Mm-hmm. Um, so, we like to we like to have the the set list come off like a greatest hits as much as we can. You know, we'll put some stuff in. If there's a newer project, we'll try to, you know, we'll put those in and be a little sort of self-indulgent there. But we do try to keep the audience in mind. It's like, no, we, if this, this should be a, an awesome ride that you're familiar with all, you know, from the beginning to end. Mm-hmm. The Rainbow Butt Monkeys got together in 2018. You guys reunited. <laughs> we got to play in our hometown, the same stage where pretty much we started. There's a, there's a uh, uh, there's a park in Burlington called Spencer Smith Park, and we would uh, we would play that any chance we could. Um, but just at this, you know, we would play to in the afternoon to maybe 15 people, um, and be we'd be so glad to do it. And so the, in 2018, after gosh a really really long time of never playing those songs, we uh, we got to break them out again, and it was nothing but love. It was a really really fun time. Must have been great. Scott Anderson's our guest. Finger Eleven is the band. They've got the greatest hits album that's coming out on vinyl in August. And uh, I believe it's already out as far as an album goes here. Uh, it just came out in the middle of June. So, uh, I mean, lots of great things on the, on, the, on the horizon. You guys are on tour in Canada. You're going to be touring North America a little bit, too. And uh, would you do a song for us right now? We'd love to hear something from you. Sure. So this is the whole band collectively. You guys put this together for us. Well, it's it's James, Rick, and 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 myself doing this. Yeah. And what's the name of the song? So we'll we'll start with uh, we'll start with one thing. All right, Finger Eleven, one thing here on Border Crossings.
The Voice of America. We're talking with Scott Anderson. That was one thing, one of the biggest hits from Finger Eleven's collection, and they're all on the Greatest Hits album. Do you have favorite songs, fa- your own favorite preference songs that you like from the band? Yeah, I've got some favorites. I do. I um, I think there's, you know, I, I did I did mention Quicksand. I think that was one of the first sort of really unique sounding songs that we had come up with. It, it dabbles more in sort of like a, there's there's kind of an angst attachment to it that I don't really relate to anymore, but I think it's a pretty well-crafted song. Mm-hmm. Um, I like um, Falling On. I th- I, I'm i glad that that song became a hit. It was a relatively easy song to make in the way that, you know, the guys gave me the music and I just got to react to it and in a couple hours, I, I, I felt like I had something, you know, you feel like you're kind of digging something out of a song and mm-hmm. you just got to find it. That's, that's really fun. Cause time goes by like that, like everything kind of stops until, okay, wait, after a little while, I think I, there is, there's something here, you know, let's, um, and it's kind of a, it's, it's got an optimistic feel to it. I always, I, I enjoy that. Uh, if I can find some sort of optimistic angle in a song, I always, try to so mm-hmm. yeah i i like them all but there's some some i like better than others mm-hmm. and so have you thought about doing a solo album ever or is that's not in the cards you're going to stick with the band i don't think i'll need to do a solo record more, any more than like oh you know i couldn't imagine i couldn't imagine that really um I don't think I'm that uh, prolific anyhow, you know, (laughs) there's not a mountain. There's a bunch of gear that Finger Eleven has put together, Mm. but you know, there's, there's some where it's like, okay, maybe this doesn't fit in Finger Eleven land, but maybe we can make, do a side project or something, Mm. but I don't know. I get, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with like how we do things uh, with Finger Eleven. Mm. What's the songwriting process like for you guys? I mean, as a band, is there one person responsible for lyrics, one for the melody, or or how does it work? Well, what typically happens is things will come out of a of a jam. You know, the guys will get together with you know and just kind of jam musically, and you know try to figure out if there's you know get get a few riffs together, and then they'll give it to me, and I get to react to it. I get to sort of what I'll normally do is find a melody and then figure out words from there. So lyrics and melody falls on me a lot of the time, but once we have what we think is something worth working on, it's up, it's up for grabs. Anybody can sort of contribute, you know, James has contributed lyrically. And then there's a lot of um, melodic discussion sometimes. And that's Mm -hmm. an easier discussion now that I'm a little bit older. I used to be a little more cagey when it came to that, (laughs) but you know, um, we work well, we still argue, but it's all respectful. We're all trying to get to the best song that we can together. So, Mm. you know, it's easier, it's easier now. And so, uh, I mean, when you guys are making songs, like picking the 15 or so songs on the greatest hits album that you put on there, one of them is a cover you did. I believe if I, if I read correctly, you're doing a a Procol Harum song, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it's, it's uh, Pink Floyd. Pink um, Floyd. Pink Floyd. Yeah. Yes. Pink we Floyd. Did Welcome to the, yeah. We did Welcome to the Machine. Uh, it's a song we used to play live. We used to open with it. <laughs> we used to open with Welcome to the Machine, really set the tone for the night. Um, and that's a song that we were trying, we've been trying to get a studio version together for years. And we, uh, there were several failed sessions where it just didn't work out. But uh, we finally got it together and we decided to put it on the greatest hits. 
We've got the guy behind the sound of Finger 11 with us here on the show today on Border Crossing, Scott Anderson. And we're going to get another song out of, out of Finger 11. What are you going to do for us next? Uh, we're going to play uh, the newest single. We're going to play Together Right. Together Right. Here are Finger 11 on Border Crossings. Crossings. That's Finger Eleven together, right? What is that song about? What's the inspiration behind that song? Well, I had this idea where there's, you know, the the main protagonist is not a great person that's put themselves in a pretty bad situation, but is asking for help wherever they can get it. And I think there's this implication where it's like, uh, I don't know whether they deserve it or not, but you know anybody that chooses to help them is probably going to go down with them as well. I thought, okay, well, it'll be fun to kind of play the bad guy. <laughs> and I thought it was an interesting idea for a song. So that was the, that was the, 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 the thought process of trying to, uh, of that song. But I like that the chorus kind of just feels uh, maybe deceptively optimistic. It's, it's just kind of feels uh, almost like a cheer. Mm -hmm. cheer for unity um I, th the, I think the verses kind of illustrate that maybe things aren't the aren't that way but um yeah it's it that that was kind of you know again i i try to write optimistic stuff as much as i can but sometimes i just it's more fun to, <laughs> to write about being the bad guy <laughs> the bash <laughs> yeah yeah because yeah, i you know i mean uh you know, we haven't been in the greatest of times in the last few years i mean we went through covid and I don't know how you guys handled COVID. How did you survive that experience? Did you get any well, music out of it? Did you guys create something as a result of COVID? I think early on, uh, we we tried, but it was really hard to do remote stuff for us. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that happened was um, 
I had a brand new baby on my hands. So it was. Wow. It Congratulations. Was, <laughs> yep. Yep. We had planned, you know, uh, we got pregnant in December and then, or, or no, we, we, we knew basically everything was going to, we were, we were staying indoors <laughs> for the next couple Regardless. of years. Regardless. <laughs> right. We were, this was the main focus. So interest, very interesting time for me. Um, I, uh, I don't, you know, I, I'm, I was a first time father, so I was learning as I went and there wasn't a whole lot of time to, for, for creative outlets or anything like that. So, mm -hmm. uh, we were just trying to figure it out as we went and, uh, you know, it's now all of a sudden he's two and a half. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's nice now that we can actually get together. It, it, there's, there's just nothing like it, you know, um, we we tried it, but I'm glad that there's there, the, the creative process is going to go a lot faster now that um, we're able to uh, you know see each other face to face. Mm -hmm. How has fatherhood changed, Scott Anderson? Okay, well, so first of all, there's I think you know I mean not everything changed, just every single possible thing you can think of changed. <laughs> you know, like they, right. being that, that there's it's stuff I never would have thought of has absolutely changed. But I think as far as going, you know, I, I think I need to be a little more, uh, I don't want to write negative stuff anymore, you know, even, but even, you know, without, uh, but, but I've, I've got, there's, there, I guess there's different things to think of now, you know, it's uh, we, we, I play the new video for him and he's learning the dance moves and he thinks it's fantastic. Right. Like he's, uh, he's having a really, really good time with it. And I don't know if he thinks that all dads just have their own videos and songs. I'm not really <laughs> sure, but like, it's, it's part of our nighttime ritual and it's really, it's really special. Mm -hmm. And one of the nice things is I've been able to like be at home for, you know, two and a half years with my little guy. And unfortunately the success of the band is, is going to take me away. And that's, you know, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a new story. Um, right. But I'm, you know, I, I miss, you know, the, I used to miss leaving home and it's going to, you know, what's the, that's going to be even worse now. So yes. uh, that has definitely changed. It's I, I want everything. I want I want to stay home and I want to get out there and play shows. I want I want both. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's hard to balance it. You don't want to miss those milestones. You know, that's in I know. in your son's life. Have you written any? It's It's a boy, right? Yeah. Okay, have you written any songs uh, inspired by your son? I have not done that yet, mm -hmm. you know? So um, that's, I mean, I, I know I'll be influenced by him. You know, I, I haven't won a single argument in two and a half years. So like maybe <laughs> it should be some sort of like uh, frustration. I, I might have to sort of get out, get all that out in a song or something. But <laughs> yeah, don't argue with a two and a half year old. You're not going to win. That's what I've learned. Well, whether you've performed for 25,000, 30,000 people screaming in a venue, or if you are just dad at home, you're still going to be an idol to him either way. He's going to look <laughs> up to you. You're, you know, his whole life, he's going to admire you. We, knowing what you know about the business, are you going to encourage him to go and pursue music if he likes it? Yeah, if he, if he wants to, for sure. I mean, if he wants to play drums, maybe I'll get electric drums and maybe sort of keep the noise down. Right. But I started, yeah, yeah. I started out as a drummer, and I, I mean, there was something about music from an early. I, I knew there was something special, and there wasn't anything like it. You know, mm -hmm. nothing felt like. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there's nothing like singing either. So if he wants to, yeah, and I'll, I'll, I gotta, you know, remind him over and over. It's like, listen, man, just find, find some friends, and just enjoy the music don't do it for any other reasons just mm -hmm. you know get together on the weekend and just create stuff and uh, have fun with it you know that's uh, but i would i absolutely would if he, if he was if he was into that i would encourage it mm -hmm. and it sounds like you started at a very early age it wasn't like you had some other career choices because you kind of got into music you know you said before high school so, you know i guess this has always been the path there's never been a <laughs> if this doesn't work i'm going to do this well my parents were just happy that I was holding down a, a, a gas station job. And so <laughs> I had that a paycheck's to fall a back. paycheck, right? <laughs> I had, had to fall back on. I had, um, I had applied for um, uh, engineering, like musical engineering at a, at a, at a college in Canada. Mm -hmm. And 
I, it's, it's funny to think of it now because I know I don't have the patience that it requires to sit there in the studio. I don't, I, I get, I get bored and, and, and listless. I don't like focusing on the same song for, you know, a week and a half. Um, but you, if you're an engineer, you need to, you need to focus and you need to, that's all you need to do. There's, <laughs> I think I made the right career choice is kind of what I'm saying. Yeah, it worked out. It worked out. <laughs> <laughs> Scott Anderson is our guest from Finger Eleven. It's been eight years since your last album. What's are you guys? I understand taking your time, but <laughs> eight years, you know, got well, to strike while the iron's hot. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, there wasn't. <laughs> you're right. You're right. The um, I, I can't believe it's been that long. Yeah, we we don't exactly work quickly. So. Um, <laughs> There's, there's a lot of material that we just basically need to finish. And when you're not in the studio, you have too much time to mess with it. But with that's the, one of the, one of the nice things is, okay, you've got a one month block. And once that's over, you there's your album, your album's done, whether you, right. you know, whatever conditions it. So it's been a luxury because we're, we're sitting on some ideas that are very exciting. We do believe in, but yeah, the time is going by. So we're going to sort of step it up um, and, and not let, uh, <laughs> we're certainly not going to let eight more years go by. No, okay, no, no. The, the, what I are your fans? Probably. What do you call your fans? Something finger 11 fans. Do they have a name nickname? No, I, I no, I got to work on that. No, we don't have a, a cool name for them. All right. Well, I figured they, they must have a name because the band's name is so cool, but patient, but, uh... <laughs> <laughs> the patient ones. Yeah, patience, please. <laughs> but that's great. You know, Scott Anderson is our guest today talking about Finger Eleven's greatest hits album that's out and the tour they're going on and hopefully a new album in the not too distant future. Uh, is there something that you haven't done that you still want to do? Hmm. Well, I need to get to Japan somehow. That's what I need to do. Oh, you know, well, we're getting to Japan the... today. We're on in Japan right now. <laughs> okay, great. Okay, <laughs> fantastic. You know, but I just I, I'm looking forward to like uh I want that I want that free vacation. I want uh, I <laughs> I don't know how else I'm gonna get there, but we got a tour there. You know, hmm. if you don't mind a 23 hour airplane ride, shouldn't be a problem to get you to Japan. Nowadays, I think it, 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 it's never been easier. There's so many, you, you, there's so many handheld. I mean, it's, I don't, I, I do well. I, I just can't sleep on a plane. That's maybe the only problem, but I, I fly pretty well. Hmm. So I'm good. Now, what is the most unusual? We we're talking about fans a minute ago. What are the most unusual things that your groupies have ever done or given you? Hmm. I mean, I've seen some tattoos. I've seen uh, some, some interesting, <laughs> I've seen some interesting <laughs> tattoos where they'll either somebody has drawn a picture of us and then somebody else has put a tattoo of that drawing on their body. Wow. And I would say maybe not maybe the most flattering pictures, but still like, <laughs> can you imagine like somebody believes in, in you that much where they decide, okay, like I, I have no tattoos cause I can't, I just can't commit. I can't mm -hmm. figure out what's what I want permanently on my body, but to, for somebody else to have that conviction and have to be, you know, out of love for your band, that's mind blowing. I don't even want to think about that too much, mm. but uh, we've had somebody, um, you know, like throw their leg onto the autograph table, like this big old fake leg and, you know, to <laughs> sign that. Oh and God. that's, that's a trip. That's fun. That's a right. tattoo really. Anybody jump in the tour bus or hide and stow away in a tour bus? There's not too much of that. That's always, uh, I mean, there's uh, no, I mean, if there, if it was, if there's been a stowaway, it was successful. Cause I right. never, never <laughs> they're, they're still in the luggage yeah. compartment yeah. <laughs> underneath the bus. Yeah. They were Scott very, Anderson uh, is our guest here on border crossings. And so uh, would you do another song for us? Sure. We'll do, What's uh, the... we'll do, we'll do Paralyzer. Paralyzer. This song sold millions of copies. It was number one around the world and it's finger 11 with Paralyzer. <laughs>
border crossings. That's Paralyzer Finger 11 and Scott Anderson, the voice, the face, the sound behind Finger 11. He's he's the brains of the operation. He's the guy that makes the, the machine run. He's on oh, the show no. today. <laughs> oh, no. I fear we've oversold it a little bit. Okay. <laughs> no, I, I've enjoyed your music, you know, for years. And, and I'm glad that you guys are working on something new. Um, and for the next album, what are you thinking about? What are the concepts that are milling around in your mind? Well, I think there's the only thing that makes a, a, a cut on finger 11, you know, if, if it gets a place on a record, it, it has to be of a certain quality. It, if it's mellow or if it's, uh, you know, vibey or, or, or a hat, if it has a harder edge, the band just has to kind of agree that there's like, no, 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 it's, it's, you know, it's, it's good. It is that good. So I like that metric, you know, so I'm not exactly sure what it's going to sound like, but there's going to be, you know, I mean, we've got together right now, which I think sounds more modern than we've sounded in a while. Mm -hmm. uh, so we might sort of use that and kind of, you know, there's, there's already a few songs that, that are, that are very, that are, that are rocking. And if we can just, finish those up um that'll give us a nice couple uh guideposts of you know where to take the rest of the ideas mm -hmm. so um you know i think it'll be it's 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 tough to write up tempo songs that's i don't know if you like that's um so if we can sort of do a few more of those and have them be uh as interesting as together right and maybe not as you know, not as gloomy or angsty as our older stuff. I think that's maybe uh, the way forward. Mm -hmm. And you guys have toured with Three Days Grace and Seether and Creed and quite a few other bands, rock bands. And uh, it, on your wish list, who would you like to go on tour with? Who would Scott Anderson like to be on tour with? Oh, boy. That's tough, right? Because, like, I mean, I got my wish once with, with, with Ozzy Osbourne. And oh, did you? And and we and you know that was difficult. We went across with with Ozzy, and I was looking so forward to it. And we had uh, the the set length was about a half an hour. Now we got in front of a bunch of like Ozzy and Black Sabbath fans. They don't really care about much other than seeing Ozzy, which hadn't occurred to me. I would just I just thought, oh okay, look, I have a half an hour. Maybe they don't know who we are, but you know, we'll get them. Like, and it was. We got them eventually, but the set was over before it was done. But you know, you've right. got a lot of you've got a you've got an arena full of people that are just waiting, waiting for somebody other than yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, so, yes. You need to you need to have a rat. You know, that's what you need to do. Is you need to do an Aussie. You know, yes. take a rat. <laughs> <laughs> so the tough gigs, you know, they were it was a challenge. But I was like, oh, okay, this this tour is going to be different than I thought. So. um and then I, I don't know, I get really, really starstruck pretty easily. So uh, if I were pl playing with some of my favorite bands, I, I, boy, I'd be a bundle of nerves. Yeah. Rolling Stones, you know, Guns <laughs> and Roses. Uh. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Like, oof, sure. I'll, That'll get you to Japan. I mean, I'm I'll, sure they're playing Japan. I'll get on that. I'll get on that. And I'll, I'll be cool as heck. I'll just, <laughs> I'll just pretend that, uh, you know, it's all good. I don't even care. <laughs> Scott Anderson is with us. Uh, Finger 11 has their greatest hits album out. And uh, you guys want to do a, a vinyl version coming up in August, I read. So, I mean, vinyl seems to be doing great. Vinyl has helped the record sales industry tremendously. I don't know what it is because I can't find a turntable anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I grew up with vinyl and I do. I, I hate that I can't get that. Well, you know. That, that experience, I'm glad it's coming back where, you know, you've got that, the artwork in front of you, like, and it's sort of like, you can be fully immersed. I mean, that's how I used to, that's how I used to listen to music. And um, that is pretty special to sort of like, to be able to kind of reclaim that and, and, and re-experience that. That's cool. And we've always wanted to have something on vinyl. And this is finally you know, and what, what better time than put the, you know, the greatest hits on, you know, we might, right. if, if everything goes well, then I think we're going to explore some more options because fans have been calling for specific albums to be on vinyl. So that's great. 
Can't you? I can't imagine how many millions of people, how many young people have no idea what it's like to put the stylus in the middle of an album to try and find <laughs> a song, a cut in the middle of the album. Yep. <laughs> yep. And and some of those songs sound worse than the others because you've been wearing out track. That's three. right. Yeah. You've burned yeah. them. Q-burn or whatever. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Scott Anderson is with us. Before I let you go, where can people find you and the band on social media? Where do they go? Yeah, you can go to Finger Eleven on Instagram, and um, I think that's probably the best way. Uh, Rick is on TikTok, um, and I'll I post videos from time to time, and I throw them to them, and they're you know they're, you should be able to find us. <laughs> we're we're a lot more social than we have been, or like <laughs> we're on social media more than we have been the last eight years. Hmm. So look maybe for you'll do a, a documentary. You know, you guys should make a little. Here's the story of Finger Eleven. You know, yeah, that would be really cool. That would be cool. And the last thing I'll ask you to do is to, if you want to give a shout out to the audience around the world, which includes the troops who are also tuned into VOA. But if you want to say something to our audience in a hundred countries around the world, they'd love to hear from you. Hey everyone. This is Scott from finger 11, everybody out there. Um, looking forward to seeing you. Everybody stay safe and keep rocking. All right. The Greatest Hits album is out now. Get a copy of it wherever albums are available, wherever you can get music, Spotify, iTunes, wherever it is. Get yourself a copy of the new Greatest Hits album from Finger Eleven. Scott Anderson, thank you so much for being on the show. We appreciate your time and please come and visit with us again. We'd love to have you on again. And uh, in the meantime, my name's Larry London and you're watching Border Crossings on VOA TV. Yeah.